We are the hollow men. We are the stuffed men leaning together, headpieces filled with straw. That's how T.S. Eliot starts his poem. And well, I won't use any names. Uh, my good friend, whose initials are Mike Johnston, um, brought up a fantastic point, and I, I've had to uh, I've had to think about this and reflect on it and jotted down a few notes to share. See, T.S. Eliot wrote this poem as an exposition, as an artful exposition on what happens when society loses their dignity, what happens when they lose their liberty, their collective ability to make their own future, to make their own destiny. So he entitled his famous poem, one of my favorites, The Hollow Men. When people watch the political process, they expect dignity, but we have not delivered. See, dignity acknowledges the real heart of an issue. Dignity is our reason for rule of law, protection under the Constitution, process, policy. But unfortunately, my friends, it seems as I watch what we are doing, dignity is missing. The argument here, as I understand it, is that we are trying to protect those who would be future victims in crimes like what happened at Columbine, Virginia Tech, Aurora, Newtown. So I ask you this question. Which of these bills that we voted on today, this included, would have prevented any of these tragedies? I've heard from dozens of great Colorado citizens who hoped to tell you how it would hurt them, how these bills would hurt them, their business, their ability to protect themselves. But they didn't get the time to testify. Why didn't we give them the dignity to testify on these bills. You see, this process demands that we ask questions, that we answer questions, that we put our emotions aside and answer the call of reason. Reason shouts to us from history, from literature, from science, all around us, but we have put it off, we have closed our ears, we are like those sailors with Odysseus, stopped up our ears with wax so that we may not be drawn off course by the enchantment the beautiful enchantment of reason. And the tragedy here is that in doing this, we have turned people into pawns to play power politics. We have taken the victims of these tragic shootings and we have paraded them around while arguing for laws that would not have protected them. But it goes deeper. We are a deliberative body. This means we engage in long and contemplative discussion. I think we got the long taken care of. But have we contemplated anything? Have we contemplated the heart of what we're doing here? And we owe the people of Colorado the dignity of answering questions, of the chance to speak up when laws are being made, but this isn't happening. I ask again, which of these tragedies would have been prevented by the laws we are voting on here today? We look in history, we have many lessons for us. The tragedy of the Dred Scott decision, 1857, was that it did not acknowledge the dignity, the God-given dignity of, quote, people of African descent created by God and therefore with inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Somehow, they argue, the Constitution did not protect them. This pathetic use of government power to protect established interests led in part to the Civil War and ultimately to the 14th Amendment in 1868, establishing all people born on US soil as U.S. citizens protected by the Constitution. Plessy v. Ferguson, 1896, declaring separate but equal fi facilities constitutional. One of my heroes, Justice John Marshall Harlan, nicknamed the Great Dissenter, disagreed with this and said the Constitution was colorblind. It took 58 years for the court to recognize its mistake, overturning Plessy v. Ferguson with the landmark decision of Brown v. Board of Education. Consequently, this is why I enjoy provoking my lawyerly friends by saying that stare decisis is Latin for we refuse to admit past mistakes. Friends, there are many past mistakes in our history, whether it's women's suffrage, civil rights, immigration reform, or even our very own experience with decades of experimenting with gun control. We've learned a lot, and we have learned that there's actually no dignity, there's no rational argument for many of these things. Yes, yes, we can play to emotions, but we cannot appeal to reason, and therefore we are missing the dignity in these arguments. 
the tragedy of all of these debates is that the, some Americans have argued that we can be a better society, that dignity can be bought if we limit the liberty of others. So today we're here to debate guns, and there's been little talk about this dignity. But dignity demands that we say when it comes to the tragic, the epidemic of violence in our society, guns are not the problem. Evil is the problem here, friends, and bureaucracy is not the solution to evil. No amount of economics, statistics, math, social science, politics can ever overcome the original sin within our society. Liberty, free in the human soul, is the only option we have. It's the only real answer. Alexander Solzhenitsyn said it best in the Gulag Ar Archipelago. I quote, gradually, it was disclosed to me that the line separating good and evil passes not through states, nor between classes, nor between political parties, but right through every human heart and through all human hearts. This line shifts inside us, it oscillates over the years. And even within hearts overwhelmed by evil, one small bridgehead of good is retained. And even in the best of hearts, there remains an uprooted small corner of evil. Since then, I have come to understand the truth. I continue the quote. Since then, I have come to understand the truth of all the religions of the world. They struggle with the evil inside a human being, inside every human being. It is impossible to expel evil from the world in its entirety, but it is possible to constrict it within each person. Friends, that's within each person, not outside of each person. And this collection of laws we're voting on here is an external imposition trying to deal with an internal problem. In doing so, and putting an external solution, we abandoned the lessons we've learned from history and said, that evil can be solved from the outside. And in doing so, we take away the dignity of law-abiding citizens. You see, this country was built on the bedrock that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. But these laws will assume the innocent guilty while the guilty continue to ignore the law. Now, I don't think this is intentional, but it's happening. I don't think liberty and dignity are intended to be sold by parading shooting tragedies that would not have been stopped by this legislation. Friends, the supporters of this bill seem to me in a sad case for their patriotism, for it takes the money of a misguided lobby oiled with the dopamine of political success and undermines the dignity and liberty of all Coloradans. T.S. Eliot ends his poem saying, this is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but a whimper. This legislation seems to be our collective whimper about a problem that's internal to our souls. So in speaking for our constituents, I will choose to speak for my favorite constituent, my wife. I freely admit my bias here. She wrote this to me after some of the unfortunate comments surrounding the gun debate, and she, it was fantastic because she caveated with this. These comments weren't intended. They weren't intended to be what, what the political process, a 24-hour news cycle, makes them out to be. The problem is, though, they lack the dignity, the real debate that was going on. And so I, I finished with this. She writes, my honest response is that one of the goals of a lawmaker is to protect the dignity of those he or she is representing. There is a strength and dignity in having the ability and right to stand up and fight against someone who is doing wrong to my body. I would not say vomiting or urinating as a response is the best way to maintain that self-respect and virtue. Of course, if I were in a desperate situation and had absolutely no other choice in order to protect myself from rape, but to follow the suggestions laid out, I would definitely resort to that. But why? Why take away my self-respect when that is the very thing I am fighting to keep. By nature, we are not as strong as our male counterparts, so we already have that as our disadvantage. If our government is one that promotes equal right among its people, why are they taking away one of the only options we have to level the playing field when evil is among us? 
While it is true that people are more prone to stronger reactions in traumatic situations, I believe that a government that will give each of its people the opportunity to effectively prepare and equip themselves for the possibility of evil and danger is one that offers strength and dignity. Friends, this bill does not give dignity to the people of Colorado. It takes their liberty and offers nothing but a whimper in return. It is the epitome of bad public policy, and we have a duty to vote no.